Previously, I got a coffee cup pushed in my face. Today, we'll uncover four Kanban principles and discover how they can help you in your agile development team, whether you're doing Kanban or, and this might surprise you, Scrum. Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to Development That Pays, and let's get straight to the action. Things started so well, so simply. A lone barista bestriding his humble coffee shop like a colossus. Doing everything in his defined process. Taking the order, making the coffee, and delivering it back to the customer. Adding a dedicated order taker into the brew didn't seem like such a big deal, but with specialization came the need for orchestration. Key to that was the buffer. In the coffee shop, this area of counter. On the board, it was this column. The gray color, a reminder that no value is added here. Waiting is one of several forms of waste, but it is a price we pay willingly for switching the system from push to pull. Let's step out of the coffee shop for now and make our board a little more development oriented. How about a defined process of develop, test, deploy? Now, if I was working alone, this board would work as it stands. But if I'm working together with dedicated developers, dedicated QA slash testers, and even dedicated deployment personnel, then we're gonna have to add in a little bit of orchestration to handle the handoffs between our specialists. And as you know by now, that means buffer columns. And yet again, it's with a heavy heart that I'm coloring them gray. No value added here. In this team, when deployment is done, the task is done, which is why I haven't split the deploy column. Some thought went into this, you know. Let's give this team some work to do. Into development. And as with most teams, development is the stage that takes the lion's share of the time. So you might wanna talk among yourselves for just a moment or two. Oh, across to done and straight into test. Test also a stage that cannot be rushed, but I'm sure we'll be, yes, we are, we're done already. And then straight across to deploy. Deploy, I think, is mercifully brief. End to end, that was about 30 seconds. So two items per minute. There are six people on this team, so I think we can do a little bit better than that. Oh, and uh, let's add some development appropriate music into the mix. Lots of things now happening in parallel. And it looks like things are popping out about every five seconds or so, around 12 per minute. Tidy indeed, and a useful metric, but there's a metric that's arguably far more important, and that is the time it takes for one item to make its way all the way across the board. Best case, as we just saw, was something like 30 seconds. But what if our board looked like this? Imagine how long it would take the pink card to make its way all the way across. Seriously, you're gonna to have to imagine it because there's no way I'm animating that mess. We already know the cure for this, and that is, of course, our friends, I hope they're our friends now, work in progress limits. I'm gonna add a whip limit of four for dev doing, two for dev done, three for test doing, two for test done, and two for deploy. We'll be seeing this in action in just a second, but just before we get there, I said at the outset that we'd be covering four Kanban principles today. And of course, we've already come across two of them. They are, for the record, number one, visualize the work. Number two, impose whip limits. All right, let's see this team in action. And again, keep an eye out for Mr. Pink. You're Mr. Pink. Things are rather gridlocked, so he's gonna have to wait a few seconds for some space to appear. And there he's off. 
As before, this is the stage that takes the longest, but there's plenty of other interest across the board, so I hope it won't feel like too long. Almost there, and into done. A little bit of a pause, waiting for space in test, into test. Cross to test done for the briefest of pauses before moving into deploy. And stop the clock. Sure, it took a good bit, more than 30 seconds for Mr. Pink to make his way all the way across the board, but he got there much faster than he would have done in this case. That's an important point. Work in progress limits don't just limit work, they also limit time. The time taken for a single item of work to make its way all the way through the system. Why is it important? Why should we move work through the system as quickly as possible? Well, think back to the coffee shop. If we take too long about it, the customer could change his mind. Can a similar thing happen in our development world? Well, yes, of course it can. Let's take away the whip limits for a moment and go crazy with the post-its. What if something comes to light that means all of these have to be reworked? Or what if we learn something that makes them all irrelevant? All the development time and money that went into these items is now down the drain, a waste. Clearly those work in progress limits are a big deal. And before we move on, I'm gonna make a small optimization. As both of these columns belong to the development team, instead of having separate whip limits of four and two, I'm gonna impose a shared whip limit of five. Can't use the red lines anymore, so I'm gonna replace them with a number at the top. Similarly for test, in place of limits of three and two, I'm gonna impose a shared whip limit of four. As I'm sure you notice, I've just reduced the work in progress of the system as a whole by two, and that should be good news. All things being equal, items will now get across the board from left to right that little bit quicker. I say all things being equal because imposing whip limits is one of those things that is simple, but it's not necessarily easy. Let's throw a little bit of a spanner in the works. Develop is at capacity, and all of that capacity is in the gray. The entire dev team is stuck, blocked. Now this might indicate that it's time for us to beef up the QA slash test team. And if this situation crops up regularly, then that probably is a good idea. But right here, right now, we have a problem. And right here, right now, we need a solution. So question for you, what should the dev team do? Option one, pick up another ticket. Option two, do nothing. Option three, do something else. The whip limit rules out option one, and that's entirely by design. Turns out that option two, do nothing, is a much better option. And if you remember when we were back in, yes, that's right, in the coffee shop, we talked about Doctor Who here beginning to stall when those cups started to pile up. It was better for the system as a whole for him to fiddle with his sonic screwdriver rather than taking more orders. What about option three? Is there anything that Doctor Who could have done something more productive? Well, many of you I saw in the comments knew exactly what he should have done. He should have jumped in the TARDIS, gone back in time. Uh, <clears throat> uh, no, let's keep things serious. No, he should have got on and made a cup of coffee. Does he have to be as fast at making coffee as our specialist, Mr. Barista? No. Not at all. Of course, he's still going to be expected to be able to produce a quality brew. We've talked a lot about specialization and in turn about specialists. Now, now we see the benefit of those specialists having some cross-functional skills, being able to jump in at various points through the process to help out as required. Jumping back to our board, I hope you can see that the best move for the dev team is to do a spot of testing. If they can help to get just one of these items in test across to done, hopefully then to be picked up by deploy, then test now has capacity 
to pull another item in from dev done. And when it does so, dev is at liberty to pull in another ticket from to do. And just like that, we've tripped over another Kanban principle, a principle that we should focus not on the dev columns, not on the test columns, not on any individual column at all, but to focus on the system as a whole and especially on keeping that system moving. In other words, a focus on the flow. What's next for this team? Well, that's up to the members of the team to discover over time. They might want to further reduce work in progress. They might find reasons to do more specialization. Or they might decide that a particular specialization no longer serves them, no longer pays them back for the additional work in progress that it requires. There are many other things that they might do, and I'm sure you can think of some of them. And if so, please let me know in the comments below. Whatever they choose to do, they are on a journey, a journey that never really ends, a journey of continuous improvement. And that's our fourth and final Kanban principle, continuous improvement, also known as Kaizen. I have one more nugget to share with you, but first I'd like to thank my co-stars in this three-parter, Mr. Barista, Doctor Who, and last but by no means least, my dear Uncle Robert. Yes, that's right, Robert is my mother's brother. And if you saw that gag coming a mile off, then you should probably subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so you never miss a thing. Since we first walked into the coffee shop two episodes ago, there'd be no shortage of Kanbans. Post-its, coffee cups, even, somewhat controversially, people. And along the way, we've also uncovered four Kanban principles. Agile framework-wise, we now have a board that would serve a team doing Kanban. It would serve them well, at least the team that we've been talking about today. And it would serve them well because its design arose from the application of those Kanban principles, which leads us to a really important point. If you're currently doing Kanban and are not getting the results that you had hoped for, chances are that you're suffering from a lack of those Kanban principles. Doing Kanban is no guarantee of the application of those principles, and it's the principles that make it work. Now, this is where things get really interesting. If you are currently doing Scrum and are not getting the results that you'd hoped for, then I have excellent news. You may also benefit from the application of those Kanban principles. It's true, there's nothing in the Scrum Guide that says that you can't visualize the work, that you can't limit work in progress, that you cannot focus on the flow. And there's certainly nothing to say that you cannot continuously improve. If this idea of mixing Kanban principles into Scrum sounds intriguing, then you may be even more intrigued to learn that there is a step-by-step -step process for doing exactly that. And I'm gonna be talking about it in the very next episode. If you're watching this in the future or have easy access to a TARDIS, then it's this video right here.